Hello, this is Juan again, um, and today is going to be um, a session slightly different than what I usually do, um, because a um, few days ago I was watching a video released by Petri uh, Hakkinen, which is probably not how you pronounce his name, uh, apologies uh, for that. Um, he was uh, he released a video of himself uh, working on on a big twenty RPG he's is making uh, that is called the Fall of the Black Mage. Um, and on that video that I will put the link in the in the in this video description if you in case you want to watch it, he was working on his game and and I found quite interesting the way he is uh, putting together the 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 map data by. Um, let's say he's writing a Lua code that is basically uh, generating the map data. And, and I found that uh, the way he's working on that is, is quite similar to what I do. Um, but I'm actually doing it slightly different because what I'm using as source instead of my own code is um, the output from a tile. So I thought, hmm, let's make a quick video. Um, talking uh, a little bit about how do I use uh, Tile in my 8-bit games. Um, and I don't know, maybe this is interesting and, and you know, you might think that is useful and you might take a look and start using Tile. Um, so what is Tile? Tile is a, it's a map editor, uh, which is not focused on 8-bit games or anything like that. It's just a general for game dev tool. Um, and I'm using it because uh, for me it's quite difficult to uh, make uh, user interfaces. So, I mean, I can make a website, but you know, all this stuff of of, of a UI with um, a des desktop application is quite complicated and it's time consuming. And then actually, I just want to make games. I don't want to do tools. Um, some people do them, make those tools, but I'm not really. Um, I, I don't feel like spending time on that. So what I do instead is, is use Tile. Um, I mean, I'm going to explain how I used uh, Tile to put together the map data for uh, Kitsune's Curse, which is my uh, newest um, CPC game. Um, we may see some stuff that could count as a um, spoiler. So if you haven't played the game and you plan to play the game, I think you should just stop watching this video, play the game, finish it and come back um, or just don't finish it. But yeah, it's up to you. I mean, it's not a big spoiler if if anything gets spoiled, but um, just just a warning uh, there just in case. Uh, yeah, because there are some things that you don't know until you play the game and, and it's probably nicer if you play the game um, without knowing about that. So um, basically, uh, I'm going to explain how I use Tile and and then, you know, that doesn't mean that this is the right way of, of doing it, uh, but this is how I do it. Um, so what I do with Tile uh, usually is um, I have, most of my games have three different layers. You can have more, but I'm basically using three of them. Um, so the first line uh, layer, uh, well, I'm not going to actually explain how to use Tile. I'm just trying to explain how I use it. Um, so, I mean, you probably need to learn to use it uh, before before actually applying some of these ideas. But I guess, um, yeah, let's take a look to this. Uh, so basically, this is how I do it. So uh, I use a, a, a Tile layer. Uh, that is the map, which is basically tiles in this case. Uh, in my tiles are, um, in this case, I think I'm using eight per eight tiles. Um, and, and this is my, all my tile sets, because um, in order to save memory, what I do is I, I limit uh, each screen to be, um, to be, four bits uh, per tile, which is only 16 tiles. So from here to there, this is one tile set. And the one we're looking at this screen is the second one. And this second line here is the, is the line of this tile set. So I can just 
just regularly, you know, you draw normally, for example, you could be doing this uh, and just, you know, just put stuff on the screen. So that layer gets, uh, is a tile map. So basically you have, a, you would have a, as a result a, a matrix um, that has basically the index on this tile set here. Um, and and that's, that can be quite expensive because it means that, well, in my, not in my case, in my case, I'm not going to use a byte per tile because I use four bits, so it's half of it. Uh, but you need to be careful with that. Um, let's take a look to to the code, uh, to some, some, some pieces because it's going to be useful. Uh, so we hide uh, tiled and let's take a look. Um, Let's take a look to uh, right. Okay, so tile uh, supports uh, different formats, uh, and um, and I think the native one in text mode is XML. But I'm using um, I'm exporting to JSON because JSON is quite nice to to manage uh, from Python, it's to read from Python and use from Python. So that's why I'm using Python um, JSON. Um, the only downside with JSON is because the JSON export is made with a plugin. You might find that the JSON may change when you upgrade um, your version of Tile. Uh, that could be a little bit of a pain, but so far I think um, uh, it works better for me. Now, so this this uh, you know is very easy to read. So basically, uh, this data is. Um, this data here is the is the tile layer with uh, all the screens, and then we have uh, the entities layer and a helper layer. Now, why I have those layers over there? Let's get tile back on the screen, and right. So the first thing is that a tile uh, as a single map. Uh, it doesn't allow you to have uh, define like something like rooms. So what I do is I have one big map, and then from my Python script I define what is the height and 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 width of the uh, of the room, and I will split it myself. Um, and I have a layer that is a helper that basically what it does is shows me <laughs> the limit between screens. Uh, because it's quite convenient to have one uh, continuous uh, map when you are drawing the screens instead of having independent map files. Um, I found that this is very useful, but the only it means that I will have one big map and I have to split that into rooms. You know, I, this big map I call it a stage, which I don't know why I'm calling it like that. It's probably because I, at some point when all game I was working on it was called a stage, and then what I I'm seeing these rooms in my games, I usually call them maps. So this is one map, this is another map, but they are actually rooms. And then the other layer, which is not a tile map, is an entity layer that is basically allows you to define um, uh, objects like this one, that it will have uh, a location, a height, width, so it's, it's like an area, and you can have a name. For example, this is a, spe a special type of object that I call a start, and um, that is basically going to be processed by my script, and it's going to tell the game where do I want to place uh, the player when we start the game, which is quite useful because if I'm testing and I'm testing this screen here, I just can move it here, uh, save, and and that's it. And then I have um, entities that translate into well, I mean, everything I'm, I'm putting here as, as entities will be converted into um, into data in in my map. But obviously, it's not going to it's not going to be that uh, JSON file we were looking at because that's huge, and obviously, uh, it has to be binary data, and it has to be packed, and it has to be compressed, and and it has to be reduced so it uses as as little space as possible. So, for example, in this case, I have entities here that will set a flag. So each room has four bits uh, as flags telling uh, the, the game if, if this exit uh, on this side on the left is blocked, if the top is blocked, 
Um, we don't need that on the bottom because uh, these tiles are solid. I think, I re if I recall correctly, uh, from that tile on, it's, it's no, from that tile on is solid, and before that is not solid. So, uh, and this fill is actually filling with a tile that is 59. And looking at that tile here, this is the one that is water. And it's, it's one tile that I call deadly. So you touch that, it will kill you. So we don't really need to block the bottom because you're not going to be able to go outside. I'm blocking the top because you could be jumping from here up or I don't know. Uh, it's just because it's cleaner and it takes only one bit in the data. Um, yeah, this is the kind of stuff the testers always try, you know, get out of bounds and try to break the game. So uh, they can break this one <laughs> because it has that flag that is actually blocking going to that direction. Um, and then entities, uh, it can be, I mean, I call it entities because, you know, the actual entities are, for example, this type of enemy that is called a uh, flame. Um, let's take a look to the game so we can see how this looks in the game. So let's get rid of tile. Then, okay. well, oh, actually, I haven't, I haven't tried this, so I don't know even know if it's going to work. So, let's see, will it work? Uh, it looks like it works. Uh, you can see the screen right now. Okay, so let's get a bit of music. So, wow! So this is the screen we were looking at in in the map. Yeah, maybe even we can see tile at the same time. No, we can't. Anyway, so that's the screen, and that's how it looks. So this entity, uh, this is the entity called Flame. You know, this is. This is the water that kills you. So that's this is how the map is being rendered. Uh, another thing you may notice is that the aspect ratio of the graphics is not one one because this is this uh, graphic mode of the CPC mode zero is uh, two one, so it looks slightly different. Uh, but yeah, when you're drawing here, it's just it looks a little bit compressed, but it's it's the same. Right. So um, this is the basic idea. You basically draw, put things. Um, uh um in your map and uh, let me see if i can move things and uh, we can see a little bit more here right so one thing that uh tile is great is that you can add any type of free form properties you know you can say uh you know you say potatoes which is an integer or you can say it's a string or whatever and then you can say you know it has six potatoes you know you can add any any free form properties you have. So all my entities that are uh, characters, for example, have a, uh, uh, a property that is called param. The, I don't know, it's not, it should be di direction because, but I don't know, for historical reasons, that's how I'm calling it. But this is going to be encoded as a bit that is going to tell me in which uh, direction uh, the this entity is going to be moving, uh, if it's going to be moving left or right, depending on param being zero or one. And fixed is another parameter that tells me that this uh, flame is going to be encoded in a specific way that is going to be um, uh, the X and Y position and then a number of, of characters that is going to be moving. The flame moves in a fixed pattern. So with that information, I can just move from the beginning to the end without having to check the environment whilst all the enem other enemies for example like uh, the oni head here they are not fixed because they need to check the environment for example if this oni was moving this oni here for example if it's moving and the door is open it has to get to the end of the screen but if the door is closed it can get through the door so it's a different type of, of, of behavior, a different type of enemy. So uh, the, the nice thing about Tile is that it's not forcing you to do things in a specific way. For example, um, I'm using uh, 
this uh, type of, of resourceful entities, but you could be using, for example, also, uh, for example, you can insert a tile or, or you can insert text. So, you know, there are different ways of, so when I'm using, I'm using shapes and using uh, rectangles here, for example. Um, and because you set a name and it will show here, is you know this is a vampire this is a key link is a way i have to to basically connect to uh, to rooms that are not uh, adjacent uh, so when you get this link which is kind of it this works exactly like um like the teleporter petri was uh, was programming on his session basically um, because uh, the link has a property that is telling me target and the target here is the ID in a tile that is going to link with. So that's quite useful because if we know that it links to 619 uh, in objects, uh, I think we can search for that in here. No, I don't remember how it works uh, now. Uh, so can we have a... Yeah, 619. So yeah, it's linking with this one, right? So that's very, very useful. Um, and you know, this one is linking back to 618, which is the other one, exactly. So that's that's really a, a nice way of, of implementing the idea of teleporter, I guess, because you can link to things. Um, and this link basically, uh, it will be, uh, a property or a, I don't remember how I implemented this, but it could be a property of, of the room saying that when you're going to cross up, if there is a link uh, uh, in here, what it's going to do is send you to a different screen, not the one that is just up in the in the regular map layout, because see down here, we, <laughs> so we have forest, then we have caves and we have forest. Well, it, that's okay, uh, because then we're going to move and process this data in a way that it makes sense, right? So when you have this and you export this as a as a JSON file, uh, we know it's going to look like this, which is a JSON file. Um, so then what I do is I use uh, this Python script that compare with the stuff, for example, that Petri was doing. I think it looks simpler. Uh, um, it has less repetition and is, and, and at the end of the day, um, I think because I, I, I made, well, and this one has a lot of stuff I don't use anymore, uh, because for example, uh, there is functionality to compress with, a, a, a AP ultra, uh, there is a set X seven UCL. These two, I don't use them anymore. I'm, I'm just focusing on, um, AP ultra because. It's just amazing. It's very good. And uh, I'm not using these other two, but I, I don't know. I keep the functionality. Then some helpers here. So, and you know, all this stuff is just for the command line interface. <laughs> so at the end of the day, it's quite simple, really, because all the heavy lifting is happening in um, in a tile, really. So, um, so what I do usually uh, is in this thing here, um, so I get the, the tile sets, uh, information about tile width. You know, this data here is uh, the data I load from the JSON. And in Python, you get the dictionary. So it's very convenient to, to use. I don't know, I have checks like if uh, the parameters are saying that the room has a specific uh, height and width, I check that the, that the JSON file uh, height and width is multiple data room size, otherwise we wouldn't be able to extract uh, the rooms properly. Um, then, um, uh, yeah, in one go, what I'm doing here is this RH and R width is room height and room width. So what I'm doing here is just extracting uh, extracting the rooms, and I also I'm checking and validating that I'm not mixing tile sets. Uh, if you remember um, what we saw just uh, some minutes ago, um, I have a big, the, my tile set is just one PNG file, it's just one image, but I'm just allowed to use uh, four bits uh, per tile. 
So this one is kind is kind of doing that, finding what is the tie set and getting that information of of um, this uh, room that I'm getting into out which tie set is using, uh, which is basically an index on the on the big image. Um, yeah, this uh, loop here is basically uh, doing the packing of the map data. In this case, I'm using uh, four bits per, per tile. Um, you know, I could be using less. Um, I think in that night I use, uh, I use uh, two bits per tile. So there are only three different types uh, per, per room, really. Um, and that's enough. And it allows me to include a lot of information. So that's why I, I could squeeze in um, 80, 80 levels, because uh, it was packed like that. Anyway, uh, then we track the empty maps. Uh, we have to compress, we compress. We will look at the output without compression, because it's easy to understand how it goes. Because uh, the compression, the compress output is not going to be uh, we are not going to be understand what we're looking at because it's compressed basically. Um, then, um, then we add a map header and then we go through the entities. And this is an interesting bit. Uh, well, for for reasons of, of my engine, what we do here is we have a list of types that is telling me the order. We also have a type uh, weight because some of them, we, I have a limit of the number of sprites that I can have on a screen on on a sp at the same time on a screen. Um, and for example, the ninja and the demon they allocate two sprites. So I need because the demon is going to throw uh, uh, a ball of fire or something like that, and the ninja is going to do the puff of the magic. So they use two sprites. Um, so. These don't use space because they are not actual entities. They are not the sprites. And these two are going to use double. And everything else is going to use one. And I want to know this because I don't want uh, to uh, go over my sprite, sprite limit. So when um, the map is processing the data, it's going to tell me if, and if in one screen I have put uh, too many entities. Um, then uh, we have, let me see how I'm going with time. I'm uh, we're doing great. So then we have a list of types that are going to be persistent, uh, meaning that they will have a unique ID in the game. And that's what I'm going to do uh, to, well, the ID is just the number of the bit in a, in a table to see if that uh, object has to be, has been used and you don't have, you can't see it again. For example, when you collect um, a portion of a key, that key is not going to show again. Right. So um, I I process those entities in, in this in this specific order because this engine needs to draw things in a specific order, uh, which is fine. Then I got things like uh, the name of the object. This is uh, to get what in which uh, room we are, or what I call a map, because remember we're using a big uh, map instead of uh, you know one map per room and the same way you know if knowing what is the tile height and the tile width and knowing what, what is the size of the room uh, we can get the modulo and we can get the x and y coordinates for that room uh yeah if it's a start see we don't we get those that data here but we don't store anything we continue in the loop because that start is going to be translated here into some defines uh, in c uh, yeah, because this map, uh, this script will generate a include file that we can include in uh, in the code. Um, and then, if it's a gem, we count the gems. If it's blocked, then with this uh, we set the bits uh, in the map flag. Uh, we will go back in a bit, and I will tell you how we encoded the data of the map. Then. Um, uh, the type, the order is what we use for the type. So if it's, for example, flame, it will be zero, one, two, three, four, whatever. That's the name we're going to use. And the my engine has is able to translate that into into to know which type it is. Um, if it's, if the name is in in the persistent list, then we allocate a an ID, otherwise it's no ID, which is the limit, 255 for one byte. 
uh, we use the most significant 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 uh, bit in um, in the type. <laughs> yeah, because we are not going to have we are not going to have two hundred fifty six uh, different types. So I just removing one byte one bit so we can have up to 64 different types of enemies and a spoiler alert we don't have that many anyway so it could we could be using more flags here um but is that what we're going to use in the f of the direction and then if there is max entities we calculate if we went over you know we collect the number of entities um and somewhere at the end uh, yeah it's going to check if any map went over the number limit of entities and we go like that, you know, do you remember there was a field on the first map? So the field basically is getting the tile and then it's telling me um, the length, so and so on. So at the end, uh, every entity is going to be the type that includes the parameter for the direction, the P, uh, which is the ID, uh, X, Y, N, if there is a spe special, uh, it could be more characters or, you know, more bytes, or it could be just one, depending if it's, uh, depending on the type. So if it's a tuple of a list, we extend, otherwise we append one. Um, and then, yeah, we append on the end. And for example, I use a Terminator, uh, which is uh, 255. Uh, because uh, my, the, my engine, when it's spawning the, the entities, what it does is goes through, through the list until we find this that is a valid ID, so we finish, basically. And then we dump the map data. So let's take a look how the map data uh, looks. Right, so, um, so for the persistence, what we do is we get the maximum uh, number of ID and then we divide into eight by eight because basically what we do here is that we have uh, an array and the ID points which bit in the... So you only need one bit to know if something is being used or not. So this is telling me how, how much um, my map is in, in wide rooms, which is 20. Uh, there are 60 maps. We start in map zero, the X and Y, these values are generated by that, that star we saw in, in tile. And then we have all, you know, the map data, which is this uh, compressed already. So 134 bit bytes. Yeah, there are big, 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 to be honest. But it's actually not that much, considering that I'm doing the packing and then compressing and stuff. Um, and I, I can't really compress the entities uh, because they don't compress very well. So anyway, and then I have an, a, a map here, <laughs> a map for the map. Yes. So I have a way of accessing each map uh, very quickly with this. Uh, right. So um, so the map data is encoded uh, in a packed uh, format, which is basically like this. So we start with one byte telling me uh, the map uh, data length, uh, not including the flags, and it will be zero if a um, map is empty. For example, in, if in the big stage that have a map I'm not using, it's not going to use space. Uh, so it would be just a zero, um, which is, you know, this is a limitation. Uh, the map with uh, the map data can be over 255, which is a lot anyway. Then one byte with flags, those flags are if the room is blocked, uh, up, down, left, right. And then from five to seven is going to tell me which tile set we're talking about. Then it comes the, the map data, in this case is for bits uh, per tile uh, that is compressed. And then we have the entity data that is basically uh, uh, terminated by 255. Um, the map data is useful because knowing the map, map, uh, map data length, uh, we know we can get to the entities. Uh, so that's important. Um, right, so this is how uh, it is being generated. So now what we can do is um, Uh, 
yes, generate a map without compression. So, so the map is. Oh, okay. I need to provide the the name stage JSON, and we call it map, and we compile that and make it bigger. And it didn't work uh, because my map is in tools, right? Okay, so this is the the map um, generated without compression. So we can do something. Uh, we can do um, and then we can have both. So. Right. So, right. So without compression, well, it's not, it's not bad. I mean, it's, it's saving a space. It also depends on the map. Um, uh, it also depends on the map. And also we need to look at, um, we have some need to take into account that what is the map data? This is not the one. No. I think I've changed things recently. Uh, I don't remember, to be honest. Uh, it's not maps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was expecting here to have some sort of tell me with uh, anyway uh, yeah I was going to calculate how 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 big is the actual map <laughs> um yeah but that's that's we can do that on a different day just we can talk about how the packing works so um yeah basically so this is how the map without compression looks like and I guess our entities start with um, our entities start with um, let's say so zero all um, oh, right because there is no start so I guess the first entity we have here is going to be fill which is one so I guess it's going to be this one. Uh, yeah. No, because we saw, uh, the, so it could be six. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So six, eight, this is the flame here. And this is the field data. And this is the end. Hmm. So yeah, that's the data we're going, we're generating. Um, and then if I remember what is this? Yeah, spawn entities. Basically, what it does is uh, so we have here it comfy. So we define here an enum type. Which is it has to match the order we have in you know in the in the map dot pi so it starts with zero one two three so forth so flame is going to be six um, so uh, yeah remember that some of them are not actually entities so but if we look at uh, one entity which is flame I also have a table here with the function that is going to do the update and the draw for each of them. So the flame uh, is one of those fixed ones that has one extra byte with the distance is going to move. Uh, and yeah, and that's it. And at the end, basically, um, it's kind of what Petri is doing really. Uh, the only difference is that uh, I have found that myself that for me, for example, if I know that I can just 
do this and yeah now it's going to walk in the other direction then save and going back to the other one we can go and run it So for me, this is great because it means that, you know, it's very simple for me to to do the, to try things and uh, for the uh, level design is definitely great because, you know, the more, the more comfortable you're doing, uh, you are doing the level design, uh, in my experience, the resulting game is it's a better game um, because I mean otherwise if I had to look at all those entities if I have to encode this by hand oh I don't know yeah I think tile is a it's a great tool it's open source it's free you can download it you can get source code if you want to um, and uh, you know they accept uh, donations and contributions uh, I have done it a few times uh, because I, I've been using this for um, this tool for all my games and, uh, and and I think it's great and that's basically a quick look at tile for 8-bit games um, I mean it really doesn't matter I mean this is my latest uh, Amstrad CPC game but we can also Take a quick look to, uh, for example, let's take a look to my MSX2 game I'm working on a little bit. So, um, so I mean, it's the same. Uh, it's not a big difference. You can use this for, for any game. And it's the same strategy. See, this is the start object. Um, let's view the grid and in this case I'm using 16 per 8 for the tile and and if we look at the at the at the tool I'm using uh, to generate the map it's going to be pretty much the same uh, it's very similar anyway okay so I think uh, that's all for today, uh, shorter than usual. Um, I didn't put the, the, the webcam on um, because in that way, if I have an interruption, you know, I don't have to cut the video or stuff like that. So um, yeah, we might, I might do this. Um, maybe use the camera and all the, the full uh, setup when I have time for it. And if I don't have time, then I don't do it. Um, Okay, so that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed uh, the video um, that uh, maybe you didn't know Tile and now you know it. Um, I will put a link to the to the project website uh, in the video description. Um, and, um, and yeah, see you next time. Bye now.